What's up everybody, welcome back. So let's continue working on our drag and drop system. Today we're gonna set up the dragging and dropping for the containers. So we can drag and drop items inside of there. And we're also gonna make it so we're gonna throw items back into the world if we drag them outside of our inventory grid. And that's going to work for containers and for the character as well. And then we can pick them up again, obviously. So that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, if you like the project, please consider leaving a like and if you want to get your hands on the project file you can leave a small donation on my Kofi page or you can become a YouTube member and then you will get access to the premium channels in my discord and the project files are there for you to download. So uh, with that stuff out of the way let's dive into today's video. So first of all to make the new setup work with our containers we need to go into the third person game mode and in here we need to change the add item to container and remove item from container functions so we can specify the inventory index and everything should work with our new setup so first let's go to the end of the function and we're going to keep this stuff so that's the container contents changed update saved container actors and then we have two array element setters so i'm just going to move this stuff to the side and then i'm going to get rid of everything else for now except the first node so just delete all of that stuff and then for the inputs i'm going to add a new one and that's our inventory index so that's going to be an integer and then we also need to change our local variables so i'm going to get rid of all of them except for the last one so that's our local container world index i'm going to keep that one then I'm going to duplicate it and I need another, another integer for the inventory index. So that's the local inventory index. And then we need two uh, content structures for the container contents. So let's create the local container inventory contents. So that's going to be our content structure inventory content structure and we can duplicate that one and that's going to be our local content to add and the last one we need is a boolean and that's local is slot found so we need to turn this one into a boolean uh, first of all let's set up all of our local variables so we're going to grab in all of our saved container actors array and we're going to find an item in here so we want to find the container from the inputs so we know the index of that container in the array and we're going to store it inside of our local container world index so let's drag that one in and make sure that we set it over here so we want to make sure that we actually did find the container so we're going to put a branch in here and we're going to check if this is greater than or equal to zero so if this function doesn't find anything it will return minus one so we have we are sure we have a container found in here um, then we're going to set our local content to add so let's drag in a setter for this one plug it in to the true pin and we can simply get the contents from the input over here so we're going to get the contents that we really. and then because a pickup can only contain one item we can simply get the first index from here so we're going to get a copy and simply get the first index and plug it in so that's going to be our content to add then we also want to store our inventory index so we're going to grab that setter as well and we can simply plug it into the input node so the inventory index over here and with that inventory index we can get the container from the input so let's get our bp container and from the container we're going to get the contents of that container and from that content array we're going to get the copy at the index from the local inventory index so we can plug it in over here and we're going to store that inside of our local container inventory contents so that's what currently inside of the slot where we drag the item on top of so now we want to make sure that we can actually store the item here so we're going to grab a branch and the first thing we're going to check if the items uh, match by accident so we're going to drag in our container inventory contents and we're going to break the structure 
And then we're also going to grab our content to add and break that structure. And then we simply want to compare the item row names. So let's grab this one and we're going to compare it to the other one. Plug it into the branch of the condition. Uh, the condition of the branch, <laughs> I'm sorry. So uh, if this one is true, that means we drag the item on top of a slot containing the same item. So we can add those two items together. So we're going to grab a set array element for our BP container. So first we're going to get our BP container from the input of the function. And then we're going to get the contents from that container. And now we can simply set an array element in here. So set array element. So we want to plug this one into the true pin and then we can use our local inventory index. And for the item, we want to make an inventory content structure and then we can go back over here and copy this stuff. And we can simply add the two amounts together. So let's make a little bit of room. So we're going to add the item amount from the items that are currently inside of the slot to the item amount of the content to add. And we're going to plug that inside of the uh, make structure node over here. And we can simply grab one of the item row names. Both of them should be the same, so that doesn't matter. And in that case, we have everything handled. So we stored it inside of a slot with the same name. Now we can go back to the branch because if there's actually something else in the slot, we need to know what it is. So we're going to grab another branch, plug it into the false bin. And it could be that we dropped it on top of an empty slot, for example. So we're going to grab our local container contents with the equal node and paste it over here. And then we simply want to know if this is an empty slot. So let's type in empty and plug it into the condition. So if this is true, then we can actually grab our set array element node over here. So the BP container, container contents set array element. We're going to connect this one to the true pin of the second branch. And if this is true, then we can simply store our content to add because there's nothing in the slot currently. So we're going to grab our local inventory index. And then we can grab our local content to add for the item and plug it in. And that should be good to go as well. So we have the same item and an empty slot. And now we can also drop it on top of a slot that actually has a different item inside of it. And in that case, we need to look for an empty slot or a slot with the same item so we can store it on top of that one. So uh, if this is false, then we need to go uh, grab a for each loop. So we're going to plug the for each loop into the false pin. And we're going to loop through the contents of the container. So we're going to get our BP container from the inputs again. And from here, we're going to get the contents. And we can plug those into the for each loop. Uh, so first let's look for an empty slot. So we're going to break our array element over here. And we can check if the item row name is empty. So let's do equal to and type in empty. And grab ourselves a branch in here. So if this is true, then we can store the item inside of this slot. So um, we're going to grab our local is slot found boolean and plug this one into the true pin. Make sure we set it to true over here. And then we also want to grab our local inventory index, plug it in here, and we need to overwrite it with the index from the array over here. So that's the new index where we're going to store the item. And then I obviously forgot that this needs to be a for each loop with break. So we're going to drag off here and look for a for each loop with break and replace the pins. So I always forget that that's kind of Standard. Oh, freaking. Uh, I didn't want to double click it, so it's opening the macros right now. Okay, we're back. So we have the pins moved over. We have a for each loop with break, and we want to connect this branch up to the break of the loop. So if we found an empty slot, we're going to break the loop. Make sure this looks a little bit cleaner. Um, so if we found an empty slot, uh, first we're going to check with a branch if we actually found something. So we're going to plug, plug in our local is slot found boolean. 
And if this is true, then we can connect it to the set array element over here that sets the local content to add. So not the one that adds them together, but the one that simply adds the local content to add. So we're going to plug in the true pin in here. And if we didn't find an empty slot, then we need to make sure uh, maybe we can drop it on top of a slot with the same contents. So we're going to grab another for each loop, plug this one into a false pin. Oh, really? I need to get myself another mouse. This one is starting to behave weird. Um, so we're going to grab our BP container with the contents and we're going to plug that in the for each loop again. And this time we're going to check if those contents are the same of the contents that we want to add. So we're going to break our inventory contents. And then we're going to grab our content to add and break those contents as well. And simply compare the names. So drag of the name, do equal to. And we're going to plug this into a branch again. And obviously, I forgot we need a for each loop with break. So I'm going to grab this one and put it over here and move the pins over again. There we go. So if this is true, again, we're going to set our is slot found boolean to true. And we need to overwrite our inventory index. So plug that in as well and plug it into the array element index over here. And then we're going to connect this one up to the break of the for each loop. And make sure it looks a little bit cleaner. There we go. And then again, we need to make sure that we did actually find a slot. Oh, my mouse is really starting to freak out right now. Okay. There we go. We're going to grab a branch, plug it into the completed pin, and we're going to check our is slot found boolean again. And this time, if this one is true, we're going to connect it up to the set array element that adds the two items together. So we found a slot with the same contents and we need to add them together. So we're going to grab this true pin and plug it into the first set array element node that we created. So that's good to go as well. And if this branch actually returns false, then we cannot add the item. So our uh, inventory is full and we do not have a slot with the same items either. So uh, there's no place for us to store it. So over here, I'm simply going to print a string for now. And that's going to say uh, container full could not add item. Or yeah, it's a container. So let's type container full could not add item. So that's if this branch is false, I'm going to make sure the text is red, uh, whatever. Okay, so we have a print in here. And that should pretty much be our function. So now we want to grab all of the stuff that we uh, didn't delete. And we're going to move it over to the end. Over here. So we're going to grab the set array element, plug that in over here. And we also need to connect up the other set array element if we find an empty slot and plug it in. And then that should be good to go. So we have two branches coming back over here. And this will simply make sure that we update our saved container actors inside of the game mode. And then we're going to save that and we're going to update the contents of the container for all players that are viewing it. So that's the stuff that we're doing over here. Um, okay, so this function should be good to go. And now we can do the same thing for our remove item function, but that's going to be a whole lot simpler. So let's open up a remove item from container. And again, at the end, we have the same nodes. So the container contents change, update saved actors, and then two set array element nodes. Uh, we're going to keep those again. So let's move those out of the way. And at the beginning, we have the find node where we set the local container world index and then a branch to check if we actually found the container and we can keep that stuff as well. So everything that's behind there, we need to delete it. Oh, really? Oh, come on. Okay, there we go. 
And then uh, for the local variables, we only need our local container world index and we can remove all of the other ones. We don't need them anymore. So uh, we can keep this part and then we can simply grab our BP container from the input of the function. So let's grab BP container. And for the container, we can get the contents. And then we can simply set an array element over here. So set array element. We need to plug this one into the true pin. And for the array element, we're going to make a content structure and we're going to simply make an empty slot. So we can type empty over here and leave the item amount to zero. That's fine. So for the index, we can grab it from the input, but we need to create it. Uh, for the input of the function so let's drag it on top of the function node and then this is going to be our inventory index so we have that one hooked up and that should be good to go actually so that's really all we need to do if we remove an item from the container we know it's this slot and we can simply set that slot to empty and then we need to hook up all of the nodes at the end again that we kept so we're going to set the array elements in the BP container, saved containers, and then we're going to save it and update the players that are currently viewing it. So let's plug all of this stuff back in. And that should actually be the entire function. So this one is done and good to go as well. And now uh, we do need to make sure that we go in and find the references to this function and make sure that we plug in our new inventory index. So first let's do the add item to container. I'm going to find references uh, inside of the game mode. There's only one. So I'm going to click the little binocular uh, over here and then it's going to pop up the search window. So we have one in our third person character. Let's go over here. And in here we actually need to pass it on to the server add item to container. So let's drag it on top of here. And if we go below here a little bit, we have the remove item from container and we need to do the same thing. So drag it on top of these events. And then we're going to search for references to this event. So right click, find references. Again, click the little binocular. And then we end up inside of our player inventory. So let's double click it. Now the first one is for our uh, place and take item buttons and we're not going to use those buttons anymore because we're going to do this with drag and drop. This was only for testing. So what we're going to do is we're going to simply disconnect these events so they don't mess up anything and we can get rid of the buttons later as well. So no need to change these nodes. But we do have another reference in here. So let's double click this one and that's it inside of the item dropped function. And in here we can actually get the inventory index from the input of the function. So we can simply grab this pin over here and plug it into the add item to container node. And that should make that one work. So let's compile and save. And then we're going to go back inside of our third person character and also find references for the remove item. And again, click the binocular one, and then we end up inside of our player inventory again. So that's the one we're not using. There's no really a need to do anything in here. And there was another one, and that's inside of our inventory slot. So let's go over here. And over here, we can simply grab the inventory index from the variables, plug it into the node, and that should make everything work. So compile and save. And make sure that everything is saved as well. So now our new drag and dropping should work for containers. And then uh, if that's the case, then we can take a look at throwing items back into the world. So let's have a quick test first. I'm going to launch a two player game. So for the client, I need to select my save slot and let's just have a look with the client. Why not? So let's open up one of these containers. And now we should be able to drag items around. So that's working and we can move them in between our inventories and we can also stack them. So we have the container part working. So let's make sure that everything is working for the server as well and everything is updating. So if the server puts something in here, you can see it actually updating for the client. Things are moving around as well. So we have everything working in there. 
So that's good to go. Uh, now let's have a look at throwing items back into the world. So first of all, let's open our character and I'm going to add an arrow component to the character to identify the direction where I'm going to throw the item. So you don't really need to add an arrow component. You can just define the vector if you want to, but I find this a little bit easier. So I'm just going to look for an arrow component and I'm going to call this my throw item direction. Throw item direction. So I'm going to move it forward a little bit so it's just outside of our capsule component and then I'm going to angle it up like 40 or 50 degrees. Let's make it 40. Well, let's make it 50. So that's our throw direction arrow and I'm going to open up my BP container. And inside here I'm going to do the same thing but I'm going to add two arrows. So let's add one. Uh, that's an arrow. So that's our throw item direction. And then I'm going to move it to one corner. So I'm simply going to uh, pick one of these directions randomly so it doesn't always throw it in the same direction. So I'm going to angle this one 40 out and then 50 up. And then let's duplicate it and move it to the other side. So we, well, that's not what I want. To do so, let me rename this one. And then I want to move it to the other side over here and angle it the other way. There we go. So we have two arrows and we can pick a random one. Um, so with that setup, let's go to our construction script for the container. And in here, we're going to store the uh, throw direction arrows in an array. So first of all, let's make sure that we are the server. So we're going to grab a branch and we're going to check if we are the server. And if this is true, we're going to grab both of our throw item direction components and we're going to make an array. Plug in both of them and then we're going to store this array as a variable and that's going to be our throw item directions. and plug it into the true pin so the server will set them and know what they are. And so with that in place, we can actually set up our throwable item. So let's compile and save this stuff and move it out of the way for now. So we're gonna right click and create a new blueprint class and that's going to be an actor. And I'm gonna call this my BP throwable item. And let's open it up and set it up. So uh, we really only need a mesh in here. So first I'm going to add a scene component and that's going to be my root. Plug it in and then add a static mesh component and that's going to be the item mesh. So for now we can define our sphere for example so we can actually see something in here. Uh, it's not called sphere. Uh, let me see. I'm not sure. Oh, it's called core. That's what it was. So we're going to look for the core mesh and plug it in here. So we have something we can see. Um, so for the class defaults over here, we want to make sure that we set it to replicate. So enable the replicates flag. And then we're going to grab our item mesh. And we also want to scroll all the way down and enable component replicates for the item mesh. And we need to set the collision for the item mesh. So go back up and we have our collision settings. We want to set them to a physics actor. So that's good to go as well. And then we're going to set up the actual event graph. So let's go in here and we want to set up our event begin play so we can get rid of this stuff. Uh, we need two variables to work with. So first of all, let's add our item name. And that's going to be a name variable. And we're going to make this instance editable and exposed on spawn. And we also want to set the item contents. So let's create that variable as well, item contents. And that's going to be our inventory content structure. And this actually needs to be an array. And then we're going to set this to instance editable and exposed on spawn as well. So for begin play, first of all, we want to check if we are the server. So we're only going to do stuff if we are the server. 
uh, is server. There we go. And then we want to grab our item mesh in here and we want to set simulate physics. So drag off here, set simulate physics. So if we're going to throw an item, we're simply going to spawn this blueprint. And as soon as it spawns, we want to enable physics. So we're going to set simulate to true. Then uh, we're going to grab ourselves a branch in here and we're going to keep a delay of 0.2 seconds. And then, uh, sorry, we're going to grab a delay and put a duration of 0.2 seconds. And then we're going to grab a branch. So there we go. And then we want to get the velocity. So right click in an empty spot and we're going to get the velocity. So for the current actor for ourselves. And from here, we're going to get the length of the vector. And we simply want to know if this is greater than or equal to something. So I'm not going to make it zero. I'm just going to keep a little bit of a buffer. So I'm going to say uh, something like five or 10. So if it's not completely at a standstill, but almost, then we're going to spawn our pickup item actor. So we need to turn this one into a loop. So if this is true, then we're actually going to go back to the delay and we're going to wait a little bit longer. So the item is still moving. And if this is false, then we're going to grab our set simulate physics and we're going to paste it over here and disable it. So for the item mesh, set simulate physics back to false. Then we want to grab our item mesh again and we're going to set the collision profile name. So profile name for the collision. And we want to set it to overlap all dynamic. So we're not colliding with it anymore. So overlap all dynamic. So if you grab the item mesh and go to the collision over here, so you can actually grab the name from here, overlap all dynamic, uh, it should be in here, this one. So that's the one we're using. Make sure you spell it correctly with capitals and things like that. Okay, so set collision profile name. And then we want to spawn our new pickup actor. So we're going to right click and we're going to spawn an actor from class. Plug it in over here and we want to spawn our BP pickup item. So this will give us the exposed variables to work with. And we can simply plug in the item row name from the variables of this throwable item. And we can also plug in the item contents. Then for the spawn transform, we want to get our actor transform. So that's where our throwable item currently is. So let's get the actor transform. And we're going to split this. And for the rotation, I'm going to split it again. And then I'm only going to use the location and the yaw rotation. And from that, I'm going to make a new transform. So all the other ones are zero. So let's split the rotation over here as well. And I'm only going to connect up the yaw. And then this is the transform that we're going to use. So that's the new pickup item that we spawned. Now we want to make sure this is valid. So let's grab an is valid node over here and plug it in. So if we actually spawned a pickup or not. And so let's do the valid pin first. So we are the server. We can simply get the game mode. And we want to cast it to our shooter game mode. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Eh? What the freak? Okay. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm confused with the multiplayer project. So we need to cast it to the third person game mode. I'm sorry. So I'm working with two projects at the same time. Um, so we're going to plug this into the is valid node. If this is our third person game mode, we want to add our save pickup actor. So we just spawned a new pickup and we want to add it to the save game. So we can drag off the return value over here. And uh, we probably want to drag off the game mode, by the way, and we want to call our add saved pickup actor function. And then we want to plug in the return value as the BP pickup. So that's how that goes. 
And if we didn't actually spawn an actor, maybe there was a problem with collision or something. Uh, so we're simply going to delete the current throwable item and don't care about anything else. So we can destroy the actor and plug that into both of the branches. So after we save the new pickup, we can destroy our throwable item. And if the is valid node returns not valid, we're simply going to destroy the throwable item and don't care about the pickup. Okay, so that should be the event graph for the throwable item. And now really only the thing we need is an event inside of our character to make sure that we can call this and throw it. And then we need to uh, link it up to our inventory. Let's open up our character and inside of the event graph, we're going to create a new function and I'm going to call this one throw item. So let's set it up. Uh, we need a few inputs for the function. The first one is the item row name. So let's add one item row name and that's a name variable. And we also need the contents. So we're going to simply call the one contents and change it into our inventory content structure. And that actually needs to be an array. And the last one we need is a boolean. And we're going to call this is from container. And turn it into a single bool. Um, so let's grab a branch first. And we want to know if we are throwing an item from a container or from our character's inventory. So let's do the false pin first and that means it's not from a container so it's from my character and then we can simply uh, grab a spawn actor node so we're going to spawn an actor from class plug it into the false pin and we're going to spawn our throwable item so bp throwable item so for the item row name and the contents we can simply grab those from the input of the function and plug them in over here and then for the transform, we're going to drag in our throw item direction arrow component. And from there, we're going to get the world transform. And then for the world transform, we can plug it into the spawn transform. And after that, for the return value, we're going to add an impulse. So we can give it a boost to throw it in a certain direction. So it's simply going to grab the item mesh, that's fine, plug it in over here and then for the impulse we're going to grab our throw item direction and we're going to get the forward vector from the arrow component and we can simply multiply it with something like a 200 or 300, something in that range, it kind of depends on what you want. So I'm going to multiply it, convert the pin to an integer and let's set it to something like 250 plug it into the impulse and then it's going to be a velocity change so that makes it behave a little bit more consistent so that's the throw item for the character and then for our container we want to do it slightly different so we're going to grab our opened container variable because that's the container where we're throwing an item from and for this one we're going to get our throw item direction array that we created so let's scroll all the way down. We have the throw item directions array. And from this one, we're going to get a random item. So let's get random array item. Now we want to plug this one into a local variable because we need it twice. And if we call this node twice, it might select the other arrow in the second call. So we're going to promote this to a local variable and that's our local throw direction. and plug it into the through pin. So now for the local throw direction, we want to get the world transform again, so we can copy and paste it. And we want to spawn our BP throwable item. So we can actually just copy and paste all of this stuff and paste it over here. So we can plug in the transform and the item name and the contents just like the other one. And then all we need to change over here is our local throw item direction. So we're going to grab our local variable. And from that one, we're going to get the forward vector. And that should make it work. So we're actually throwing it at a random location for a container. 
Okay, so that's the function that we need. And then we want to go inside of our event graph and we want to make sure that we can replicate it to the server if we call this. So we're gonna create a custom event and we're gonna call it server throw item. So we want to make sure that we replicate it to run on server. And then we can simply call our throw item function plug it in and pass on the variables. So that one is good to go. So we're going to throw the items from a widget. So that means we are at the local player and we can be the server, but we can be a client if we are the local player. So uh, since we don't know which one we are, we're going to replicate it to the server if we call this event and then throw the item. So we're going to make sure the server handles this. So now all we need to do is go inside of our inventory. So let's open up our widgets player inventory. And in here we need to make a small change. So I'm going to switch my nodes quickly. Grab my player inventory in there as well. So we have the item dropped function and inside of there we want to change a small thing. So let's open up item dropped. And right now we have, let's see. So if we drop it on top of the world, we have a branch where we put it back inside of the inventory where it came from because we didn't have a throw item function yet. So we can disconnect this stuff. And we don't actually need this branch at all. So we can move it out of the way. And then we want to simply call our server throw item function on the character. So let's drag off the third person character and we're going to call our server throw item. So we want to plug this one into the branch if we dropped it into the world. So connect that one up. And then we can simply grab the item name and the local dropped items. So that's a local variable. Let's grab that one first. Local dropped items. So we need plug it in over here. Uh, for the item name, we can simply get that from our, uh, let me see, item name. Yeah, we can get it from the input over here. So drag it on top of the server throw item. And for the is from container boolean we can simply plug it into the was world item pin so if it's a world item it's from a container and if it's not a world item it's from a player so we can plug it into the is from container and that should make that work now we could make it so if we have another fail safe we can grab the false pin of this branch plug it into another branch uh, Yes, plug it into another branch and this branch checks again if it was a world item or a player item. And then we can make sure that we put them back in the inventories where they came from if we cannot define where they are dropped. So if this is true, then we can go back to the server add item to container. And if this is false, we can go back to the server add item to inventory on the player. So that means if we drop it on top of a widget, but we cannot define where that is because it's not inside of our conditions over here, then we're simply going to put it back where it came from. So just a little fail safe. Um, so the dropping of the items should work, I think. So let's compile and save and let's have a little test again. So let's make sure we select the save slot and we have a few orbs in here. So I'm going to drop them outside. And it actually kind of worked, but it didn't really simulate physics that great. So let's see if we go to the server, what happens if we try the same thing. So that also doesn't really work that great. So we probably messed up something in the throwable item. So let's see if the vector length is greater than or equal to. And if that's true, we're going to wait. Simulate physics. So I think that should actually work. So let me double check my notes and I'll get back to you. Okay, I think I might know the issue. Um, I used the scene component as a root and I probably shouldn't have done that. So I'm going to drag the item mesh on top of here and then I'm going to simply get rid of the root. So we only have an item mesh as a component and that's all in here. And now let's see if that actually made a difference. 
So we are the client and we do not have anything inside of our inventory. So there we go. And now let's see what happens. So that's a little bit better. It's actually simulating physics and it's dropping on top of the ground and then spawns a pickup actor. So let's see if the server can actually make it happen as well. So can we pick this up? Um, no, it's floating in the air. Okay. So let's drop something inside of the world and that's actually working and if we go inside of our container and try to drop it in here so it's kind of working but it's spawning the wrong actor and i think i know why because we didn't set up the construction script for our throwable item yeah so if we go inside of our bp throwable item we actually want to set up the construction script so we do not end up with the default mesh every time but we actually have the correct mesh in here so let's drag off the construction script beginning node and we want to get a branch and check if we are the server and if this is true then we want to get a table row name and we want to get it from our pickup item info. So then we can simply plug in our item row name from the variables and we want to break the out row. And then we need to set only a few things and that's the static mesh. So let's grab the item mesh and we're going to set the static mesh. Plug it into the row found pin and then we're going to plug in the pickup mesh from the the uh, data table there we go and we also want to set the scale so let's drag off the item mesh again and set the relative scale 3d and then i'm going to split the struct pin and just plug it inside of the data table for all three of them and make sure that we connect it up so that's actually the entire construction script so now we can compile and save and this should actually spawn the correct items as well uh, so I need to select a save slot and there's nothing in my inventory. So let's not grab an orb, but something else. And now if I throw it outside of here, you can see it's actually spawning a fan and not an orb. And that should work for containers as well. So we only have a fan in here, so that should work. And if we throw it, there we have our fan. And then we can pick it up again. So it's spawning a pickup actor after the... Uh, pickup is frozen so we have everything working uh, i hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please consider leaving a like and in the next episode we're gonna continue working on our setup thanks for watching everybody talk to you later bye bye